Before I get into the video, if you are a Bulls fan and you would like to get more Bulls content and Bulls talk, do yourself a favor and go follow Bulls Scripted on Twitter. Scripted will be hosting a podcast that I will occasionally be on every once in a while, and I would highly recommend dropping him a follow. And while you're at it, you might as well follow me as well. On to the video. The Chicago Bulls this season have become the running joke of the NBA. One of the worst teams in the league. But, you know, as a Bulls fan, I am not that sad about the Bulls being a joke of a team. Because you know what team was the laughing stock of the NBA a few seasons ago? The Philadelphia 76ers. In the 2013 through 16 seasons, the Sixers were a joke of a team, consistently having lineups of players who wouldn't even be starters on a D-League team. But now, in the 17-18 season, the Sixers so far are 8-6, and six, with their rookie small forward Ben Simmons playing like an all-star, and their center Joel Embiid looking more and more like the next Hakeem. That, along with some more talent like Dario Saric, hopefully Markel Fultz, and Robert Covington, the Sixers are in the position to be a contender in a few seasons. The Bulls are in a similar position to those 2013 Sixers. The Bulls really suck, but that's a good thing in the long run. I actually think that the Bulls are in a better position than those 13 Sixers. When the Sixers went into a rebuild, they didn't have much as far as assets were concerned. They really only got some late first rounders for some of their starters, and that was about it. But for the Bulls, with the Jimmy Butler trade, they are in a much better position to be very successful much quicker. But this video is not about comparing the Bulls and the Sixers, it's about the talent on this team and its potential, and why I'm excited for the future. I'll first talk about the two guys who have been able to play so far, Lori Markkinen and Chris Dunn. For Lori, I actually almost made a video saying that Lori Markkinen would be a steal, and I ended up not doing it. Which I now regret, because I could have scored some serious points as an NBA YouTuber there. Oh well. Lori Legend, the Finn Reaper, the Finnish Mamba, the Snow Mamba, the Finisher. Whatever you want to call him, Lori Markkinen has been a monster so far this season. He's been the second best player from the 2017 draft class so far, second to only Jason Tatum. The first thing I think of when I think of Lori Markkinen is his three-point shooting, which is the first thing that should come to mind. Lori is taking 6.8 threes a game, shooting 36.4%. That percentage was better a few games ago, but Lori has been off a bit lately. Outside of the jump shot, Lori is good at finishing at the basket, shooting 65.7% from three feet or closer. He's also shown the ability to put the ball on the floor and attack, either getting to the rim or throwing off his defender by pulling up for a mid-range shot. And his passing, I feel, has been underrated so far. He's only averaging 1.6 assists a game, but he's thrown some really nice passes and his overall offensive instincts have been great. Chris Dunn has been the real question mark coming out of the Butler trade, but he's looked great, averaging 11 points and 4 assists, shooting 42% from the field and 35% from 3, as well as 2.1 steals a game, which makes sense because defense is his calling card. I can see him having a George Hill type of role in the future, being a lower usage player who's a little too good to be considered a role player, but not quite a star. And for the guy who hasn't played yet, Zach Levine, Levine is obviously a great dunker, probably the best dunker that the Bulls have had since the Jordan era. He's also a great three-point shooter. He shot 39% from three last season on 6.6 .6 attempts per game. He's also a really good ball handler and can get to the rim, and I expect his widely criticized playmaking to be much better on the Bulls, being a first option with the ball in his hands instead of a third without the ball. He averaged 19 a game last season as a third option, so I wouldn't be surprised if he averaged 23 to 25 points for the Bulls this season, provided he's not too rusty coming back. Besides for those three, there are a few more players that I am excited for in this team. David Nwaba has played great this season, being a really good defender and athlete. Denzel Valentine has been shooting the lights out of the ball this season, 40% on six attempts per game. His playmaking has also looked really good. And I really like the idea of a Kay Felder Antonio Blakeney backcourt off of the bench. Paul Zipser has played bad this season so far, but I'm still confident in him as a 3 and D guy going down the line. Besides for that, both Justin Holliday and Robin Lopez are veteran role players that I could see being traded for late first rounders, but this team is still hard to watch even with the exciting prospects. 
What I've really been watching this season are Draft Express videos, as well as Duke and Arizona games. Michael Porter Jr., Marvin Bagley, and DeAndre Ayton are three guys that the Bulls could potentially draft in 2018, and I am counting down the days. Also, for those two picks that the Bulls could potentially get for Lopez and Holiday, those picks could be used on players such as Jared Vanderbilt, a 6'9 small forward who plays like Lamar Odom, or Austin Wiley, a more old school big man with a mid-range jumper. The Bulls have a lot of potential and a lot to look forward to. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.